Hello everyone. Today I want to take you through a typical day of logging food when you're following a well-formulated ketogenic diet. So if you're not too sure how to proceed with that, you can check out our guide, the Ultimate Keto Diet Guide for Beginners. And here we go through a lot of the keto basics and we tell you what to eat and what not to eat on a ketogenic diet, especially a well-formulated one. So very briefly, that means the base of your diet is animal source foods. And then above that, you can decide for yourself whether you want to include some vegetables, especially the low starchy, low sugar ones and low starch, low sugar fruit. And then what's really important is to avoid the sugar, the flour and the high omega-6 seed oils. Those three uh, junk food ingredients really are what you have to avoid. And then making sure you have enough animal foods uh, on, uh, as your base, that's crucial. Okay, so let me show you what I logged for a typical breakfast. So uh, my macros came out to about 70% fat, 23% protein, 7% total carbs. So that includes fiber. Um, and as you can see, uh, I got a very good keto score on that. My insulin load given in glucose equivalent units, meaning how much glucose increases insulin in the blood, um, that is pretty low as well. And my nutrient completeness score for breakfast alone isn't bad. I mean, it's, it literally says bad, but that's because the score accumulates as you log meals throughout the day. And I've only logged a small breakfast. So don't worry about that. We can look at the choices and see how they're nutrient dense. So if we go to the journal, you can see that I logged three medium eggs, uh, about 10 blueberries, five slices of cheddar cheese, 50 grams of sour cream, so that's a few tablespoons, uh, a medium coffee prepared from instant beans, and some salt, uh, which could be uh, my electrolyte supplement where I'm uh, preparing for a run a couple of hours after my breakfast, say. So those are, that would be a typical well-formulated ketogenic breakfast. And if we look a bit more closely, you can see that the micronutrient intake under the macros on the dashboard will tell you which of those vitamins and minerals you might be lowest in and you might want to uh, pay attention to in your next meals. So you can see that, for example, I'm a bit low in vitamin C, vitamin K1, which is a form of vitamin K that comes from plants, unlike the active form that comes from animals, which is vitamin K2 or exceptionally natto, fermented soybean. Uh, I digress. In any case, let's say I want to improve the omega-3s, click on that, click on the card, and it brings me to the food list for the best sources of long chain omega-3 fats. So I think most of us aren't going to reach that with caviar, but you can always dream. You've got, of course, a lot of uh, cold water fish like herring, salmon, mackerel, uh, salmon roe, salmon, smelt, anchovy, sardines, so a lot of more common fish as well, barracuda, shark, oysters, trout, bass, you've got a lot of choices. So let's say I'm going to go for the more classical choice and say, I'm going to say, okay, I want some sardines canned in water. And I'm going to have about two cans. I was really hungry for some sardines, right? That's giving me 17 grams of fat, 43 grams of protein. And it's a very uh, nutrient dense food, low on the insulin index, a great keto score. So perfect for my well-formulated ketogenic diet. Let me add that to it. And now let's go back to the dashboard and see what changed. So first of all, my nutrient completeness score jumped up, right? Because it gave, gave, me, gave me a lot of the elements that I was low in uh, uh, if we just consider breakfast. Keto score is still great. Insulin load is still reasonably low. And I can look at my micronutrient intake. And now I was at 8% of the daily values for omega-3s. Now that has skyrocketed. Let's see where it takes us. So if I scroll horizontally, I can see that now my long chain omega-3 fats are at 344% uh, of the recommended daily value. Don't worry, that's not a bad thing to be over the daily value. They tend to be quite low uh, depending on the nutrients. So this is totally fine. You have a good in, uh, intake of omega-3 fats and you can see that change as you log foods. So uh, let's say I'm gonna have something else than just sardines for lunch. What could I have else? Let's say I want some veggies. So I'm gonna go uh, search for foods. 
and I can see that I have food list options available to me. Uh, probably I'm going to have some, what could I have with that? I could have some low sugar fruit. Since I already had blueberries in the morning, maybe I'm going to have some green olives with, along with the sardines. I can see that uh, I can adjust the serving in terms of slices, uh, having small, medium or large one or having grams uh, for the metric units or imperial units in ounces and pounds. So let's say I'm just choosing medium and I have about 15 medium olives. Add that to my day. Go back to my dashboard. See my macros are updated. My nutrient completeness score is still good. Keto score is still great. Insulin load is still very low. And I can see some changes to my micronutrient intake. And, you know, you can keep an eye on that. Now let's say, okay, my vitamin C is still on the low side. So what can I eat for vitamin C? I'm going to go for the best food list. And I can see that I can eat kale. I can eat parsley, red bell peppers, and even some uh, animal foods, which like veal sweetbreads, lamb sweetbreads, chicken liver, pork liver. Um, so in this example uh, of the well-formulated ketogenic diet, let's, let's stick to a mixed diet. And in that case, I could choose some spinach. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to have a bunch. And let's say I had one bunch of baby spinach. Add that to my day. Go back to the dashboard and you can see that my vitamin C is no longer the lowest micronutrient intake in my list, but it's now at 108% of the recommended daily value. So you can really be precise about, you know, adding foods according to where you may, you may be lacking. Um, so that's really interesting in terms of optimizing your, your diet. You're still pretty ketogenic, 61% fat, 31% protein, still 9% total carbs, which let me remind you includes fiber, as you can see here. And of course, if you click that, you can see this graph over you know, a couple of days. So this is useful to see how your carb intake changes over a couple of days. And yeah, you can keep logging your food, keep seeing where it uh, lands your micronutrient intake, make sure that you have a nutritionally complete diet, your keto score is good, and basically it will keep you on track to achieve your goals, whether that's fat loss, uh, building muscle, controlling blood sugars, or just eating a healthy diet. So this was a typical day of logging food for a well-formulated ketogenic diet, including plants and animals, and I hope you find this useful.